My first experience with Asian Partners International was through going on some short-term mission trips uh, to India. I had no idea what I was getting myself into at the time, but um, from the first time I went over there in about 2004, um, I was hooked and just seeing what God was doing there. Um, I became addicted to it uh, to the point where I just wanted to uh, be a part of it in any way that I could. And so uh, for several years I would go back and uh, uh, to these leadership conferences and travel to India, learn as much as I could and share what God had placed on my heart to share. And uh, it just became a, a life-changing experience for me every single time that I went. In 2009, uh, I went from just kind of a volunteer that uh, prayed for the ministry and was involved on short-term mission trips to uh, coming on staff as a director of operations. Um, and, and basically what I do is, is I help people stay connected. Um, I connect churches and individuals. I let people know how they can pray for us, uh, let people know how they can partner with us, and uh, basically do my best to tell the story of what God is doing in India. So it's a fun job to get people involved with what God is doing. But I think the heartbeat of, of Jesus is that no one would perish without knowing Him, uh, that He would be glorified among all peoples, all language groups, all ethnicities, all geographical areas. And so the heartbeat, the heartbeat of API it just goes right along with that. Um, uh, we want the lost to be saved. Uh, we want the blind to see. And, uh, and so we're privileged that God has invited us into His story and what He's doing in India. And uh, the place that He's called us to work is is a place where people haven't had access to the gospel. It's been a place that, um, that have been very resistant to the gospel for hundreds of years. And, uh, and he's called us there and, and, and said, um, preach the good news, uh, heal the sick. And, um, and it's amazing to see what God has done as a result of us just simply obeying him. One of my favorite things about the ministry of Asian Partners um, is the way um, that they are able to, to really have such a beautiful combination of meeting physical needs legitimately, but then also um, meeting spiritual needs. And I see a lot of organizations that are really heavy on the, the physical needs side, so they can uh, feed you, they can teach you to read, and all those things, but sometimes over time the, the gospel maybe loses its significance in the middle of that. Other ministries may be so gospel focused or ministry focused that they do crusades, they preach, but at the end of the day people are hungry and they're dying and they're sick. Um, one of the things that, that I love about Asian Partners and the way the ministry functions in India is that it brings the two together just as, just as the ministry of Jesus was. Um, and, and so as our leaders are trained to go into villages, they, they access, or they, they, um, um, they evaluate the needs in a community. One of the strategies of Asian Partners is to send leaders into unreached villages. And they go there not as evangelists and not as preachers, but they go there as community leaders, community developers. When they go there, they assess the needs of the community. They find out what those needs are, and it's different for every village and every community. Some of them, they start literacy centers. Some of them, they care for children. Others, they teach them agricultural needs or hygiene needs or um, microloan type programs. So they start all kinds of different programs. Whatever the needs of the people are in that village, um, this leader goes in. But they don't stop there. These leaders have been trained to find the, the people of peace um, as they build relationships and as they build trust in these communities. As that person of peace or this family of peace is identified, uh, this person knows to start sharing the gospel and to train them and to uh, disciple them because they understand that the gospel is going to penetrate that village or that area through an insider. And so um, we just trust God that he's going to provide these people of peace um, and our leaders as they disciple them and train them and lead them. Um, they, they fully expect God to use that family to, to reach those in their community. And we see that happening hundreds and thousands of times over. Um, so what starts as a very simple, basic need um, leads to salvation of households and villages. I think discipleship is, is teaching people to obey Jesus. You know, in the Great Commission, Jesus didn't simply just tell us to go and evangelize. He said, go and make disciples of all nations. In 2 Timothy 2.2, it says, what you have heard from me, pass on to others, who will then pass on to others. And so in, in that one verse, we have four generations of passing on the teachings of Jesus. We have Paul to Timothy, to faithful men, to faithful other men. And, and one of the things I learned very early on about Asian partners was as they evaluate the success of a church, they don't only look to that one church. They look and say, what, what fruit has that church produced? 
what church has that church planted? Not only that, but what church has that church that you planted, planted? So when you look at disciples and you look at churches, we're always looking at the third and the fourth generation because we know that disciples are made to make more disciples. And we've all been called to, to be disciple makers. Well, Agent Partners exist uh, to get people involved in what God is doing. And there are several ways that you can get involved. Uh, one of those ways is to pray. And that's not just cliche to say you can pray for us because that's what you're supposed to do. We really believe in the power of prayer. In fact, this whole movement in North India was started as a prayer movement. And for the first beginning years of the movement, it was simply guys getting together, praying that God would do something incredible. And he's answered that prayer. So prayer continues to be um, a way that you can join with us and, and uh, walk hand in hand with our leaders. You know, India is a long, long ways away. We can't jump on a plane always and end up on the other side of the world, but uh, we can always join God's heart um, through prayer. Uh, another way is by giving. You know, we, we also exist to, to resource our brothers and sisters in India. And so we resource them through providing financially for them. Um, that's how we're able to train leaders um, and, um, and meet the, the physical needs that we do. Um, another way is by going on a trip. Uh, we offer several short-term mission trips throughout the year. And so uh, we love to take people and just expose them. And so that's one of the things we always, see, always say is just come and see. One of the things we always say uh, for people interested in getting involved uh, with ministry in India is come and see. Uh, we invite you to come and be a part of what God is doing. Well, I think God has, has done something amazing in my life, and, and because of that, um, I want others to experience it, very simply. And that, that looks a lot of different ways, whether it's here in Lubbock or whether it's halfway across the world in India. Um, but God did something really special in my life uh, the first time I went to India and my picture of God became a lot bigger. And um, I realized that God was not only a personal God, uh, but God is a global God. And um, you know, John 3.16 says that, for God so loved the world. And you know, as growing up, I remember in Sunday school when things being told, you know, we could, we could scratch out um, the world and we could put our name right there. So for God so loved Kobe. And, and that's true, God's a very personal God, but he's also a global God. And the verse says, for God so loved the world. And so as I went to India, I, I was exposed to God's heart for the world, uh, for the people that have never heard the name of Jesus, the people that didn't grow up um, going to church and having access to the, to the truth of the gospel. Um, and that does something to you, that shakes you up when you encounter uh, someone ha that hasn't had access to the gospel. Um, and so I, I think what motivates me is, is you know, wanting others to experience the same saving grace that I've received. When explaining the, the ministry of Asian partners to people, sometimes I um, uh, explain to them that they may not see much on this side of the ocean. You know, we're a small organization and um, we do that intentionally because we want uh, the vast majority of our resources to be given on the ground to the people um, in the trenches, so to speak, in India. Um, and so, you know, sometimes we're, we're seen here as we're kind of small on this side, a couple of us doing our best to, to, to operate, um, but we're supporting a large ministry in India. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd rather it be that way than the other way, where there's a lot to see on this side, but when it comes down to it, there's not much on the ground. Um, so every, every time I go to India, I'm amazed at the staff, uh, the way that they're, they selflessly serve, uh, the way that they boldly serve in the face of persecution, the face of barriers each day that they, they have, um, in the face of persecution, I just said that. Um, the, I think that's the thing that amazes me the most, um, is the way that our staff serves there. Um, they're the hardest working people I've ever been around, and their commitment to the gospel, and their commitment to seeing uh, their own people come to know Jesus is incredible. If you know of a ministry that we need to know about, please give us a call, 888-641-8606, or take a look at our website, revelationstv.org.